These are the answers for page 95. They're just the even answers. You can find the odd answers in the PEF purple folder that is on Schoology and you would need to search for PEF number four and that should solve or get you that information uh, for the odds. So I'm just going to do two, four, six, and eight. So problem number two, we have f at x, which is the same thing as saying y, x squared minus 4x plus 4. I have an a value that is 1, so it's going to open up because it's positive. The b value is negative 4, a c value that's also 4. We're going to use negative x equals negative b over 2a. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So that's 4 over 2, which is 2. So I get an axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry of 2. So that's pretty much straight down this line right here. Okay, axis of symmetry right there. Okay, so let's, uh, let's find the vertex. So my vertex, remember it's the x component, and then I'm going to plug in. So I'll plug the 2 back into these two spots on our original. So I get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. So that's 4 minus 8 plus 4. And this is going to give me 0. So I have 2 comma 0 is my vertex. It's also a root because it's touching the x-axis. Now we can go ahead and pattern graph. So it opens up, so it's going to be a times 135. My a value is 1, so 1 times 135. So my pattern graph would be 135. So from here, I'm going to go right 1, up 1. So that gets me to 3, 1. Left 1, up 1. That gets me to 1, comma 1. I then am going to graph the 3. I'm going to go right 1, up 3 and left one up three. And that gives me the point four comma four and zero comma four. So that happens to be the y-intercept. And I have enough to go ahead and graph. I could have probably done the five, but I don't always have to do it in all cases. The only time I like really going to the, the last value is if I haven't found any roots yet and it's still below it or way above it if it's opening down. Problem number four. And f at x is equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. My a value is 2, my b value is negative 8, and my c value is 5. So this is going to open up because my a value is positive. I'm going to use x equals negative b over 2a. And let's plug in what we know. I get negative, negative 8 over 2 times 2. So that's 8 over 4 which is going to give me 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 2. That's the same as the last one. So that's coming straight down this line. Uh, let's make it, this, make it the dotted. Okay, let's find my vertex. My vertex is always the x component, or is the axis of symmetry, and then I'm going to plug it in. I'll say pi for plug in. So I'm going to plug that into those two values. So I'm going to get 2 quantity squared minus 8 times 2 plus 5, which is going to give me 2 squared is 4, plus, or times 2 is 8, minus 16 plus 5. That's going to give me negative 8 plus 5. So that's negative 3. And so my vertex is at 2, negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and figure out my pattern graph. It's a times 135. My a value is 2, so it's going to be 2 times 135, which is 2, 6, 10. I'm going to go right 1 up 2, which takes me to the point 3, comma, negative 1. Left 1 up 2, that's going to take me to uh, positive 1, negative 1. 
And now I'm going to use my six. So I'm going to go right one, up one, two, three, four, five, six. So that takes me to the point uh, four comma one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to go left one, up six. Six. That takes me to zero comma six. So I found the y-intercept. I take a take a look. I don't have any roots on this one because I, I do have two roots, but I can't see them exactly. We will look at a method later that'll show us how to find those out. Problem number six, we have f of x. f of x is a different way of saying y. It's 2x squared minus 8x minus 4. So my a value is negative 2, so this is going to open down because it's a negative value. B value is negative 8, C value negative 4, X equals negative B over 2A. So I'm going to go negative negative 8 over 2 times negative 2, which is going to give me 8 over negative 4, which is negative 2. So my axis of symmetry is negative X equals negative 2. That's our negative 2 right there. So my vertex is going to be negative 2, and then we're going to plug in. So I'm going to take this negative 2, I'm going to plug it into each of those x values. Negative 2 quantity times negative 2 quantity squared minus 8 times negative 2 minus 4. It's going to give me negative 2 times 4 plus 16 minus 4. That's going to give me negative 8 plus 16 minus 4. So that's 8 minus 4, which is 4. So negative 2, negative 4, or negative 2, positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. There's my vertex. That's my vertex. Let's check our pattern graph. It's a times 1, 3, 5. My a value is negative 2. going to give me negative 2, negative 6, negative 10. So I'm going to go right one down 2, which takes me to point negative 1, comma, 2. I'm going to go left one down 2, which is going to give, take me to negative 3, comma, 2. And then I'm going to go down the 6. So I'm going to go right one down 6, which takes me to point 0, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4 negative 4, so that's the y-intercept, left one down 6, and that takes me to the point negative 4, comma, negative 4. I have enough information to graph my parabola. I'm not sure what my roots are, but my roots do exist in the real number system. Last problem that I'll do is number 8, it is f at x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's going to give me my a value is 1, so it's going to open up because that's positive. My b value is 2, my c value is 1. x equals negative b over 2a, which is negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is negative 2 over 2, which is equal to negative 1. That's my axis of symmetry, so we can go ahead and plot that. Negative 1 is here. Remember, my vertex lives somewhere on that. In order to find my vertex, I'm going to have negative 1, comma, plug in. So I need to find that y value. We'll take this negative 1. We're going to plug it into those. So I'm going to get negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. That gives me 1 minus 2 plus 1. That's going to just give me 0. So negative 1 comma 0 is right here. That happens to be a root because it's touching the x-axis. I know the exact value. Uh, pattern graphing is going to be a times 1, 3, 5, where my a value is 1. So 1 times 1, 3, 5 is 1, 3, 5. And I'm going to deal with this one. I'm going to go right one, up one. That gives me 0, 1. That happens to be the y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Negative 1, up 1. It's going to take me to negative 3, 1. And then I'm going to go up 3. So 
right one up one, two, three, left one up one, two, three. That takes me to one comma four. I think one, two, three, four. Yep. And negative four, four. And there's enough information to make our parabola a nice shape. Uh, again, you can find the odd answers worked out in the purple folder on Schoology. And let's go back and see if we can find the problem we have there. Okay. Um, we just have this problem here. This problem, if I factor it out, if I factor this, Factored out looks like that. Remember, factoring is what I did in the last chapter, where I basically said, oh, okay, I'm going to multiply those together. That gives me negative 8. I know I have to alternate the signs. So 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. This would work to add up to negative 2, as long as I had a positive 2x and a negative 4x. I'm going to squeeze that in right here, so that gives me x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8. Factor out an x, because that's what I have in common on the first two. The negative sign comes through. Factor a 4 out. That gives me x plus 2. So I wind up with x plus 2 and x minus 4, which is the same as this. Now, if I had taken this and I had taken x minus 4 and set it equal to 0 and x plus 2 equals 0, if I add 4 to both sides on this one and I subtract 2 from this one, this actually yields me the point 4 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0, which are my roots. My roots are where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to build upon that idea. When we do this, we can go ahead and pull this out. So use the function to find the zeros, aka the intercepts. That means I have to factor it. This one says we're going to plot the zeros. So if being I know my roots come from factoring my quadratic, my x squared term, and setting it equal to zero, and then find the axis symmetry. Oh, that's going to be halfway in between the x-intercepts. So we're going to look at that a little bit more. And then find the vertex by plugging in the x values of the axis of symmetry. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, this one's already factored down, so I'm going to go x minus 4 equals 0, so add 4 to both sides. And I'm going to go x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to give me my roots at 4 comma 0, so 4 comma 0 is right here, and then negative 2 comma 0, which is right here. Now we have to kind of think, what is halfway between, what's halfway between those two dots? So let's think, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, I have 5 numbers in between. So if I go 1, 2, 3, right here, this is where my axis of symmetry is going to live. My axis of symmetry is right in here. Okay, so my AOS, I didn't even have to go to x equals negative b over 2a to get it. It just, because it falls halfway in between my roots, it falls between my two roots, that's where I know it will live there. Now we can go ahead and find my vertex. My vertex is going to be at um, at 1, and I guess I don't need a 0 there. It's just x equals 1 is my axis symmetry. That's the same as that. Now I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug this 1, and plug this 1 here back into here and here. So if I go 1 minus 4, keep in parentheses, 1 plus 2, that's going to give me negative 3 times 3, which equals negative 9. So 1, negative 9, and look at that, you know it already opens up because of what's taken place. We have enough information to graph our graph. We have our vertex and we have our roots. That's how you do that problem. Okay, on uh, page 98, this is the second example. So let's plot my roots first. So I'm going to go x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides. So that gives me 1 comma 0, which is right here. 
and then x plus 3, set it equal to 0, so that gives me x equals negative 3, so negative 3 comma 0. And let's think, right in between, I got 1, 2, 3, there's 3 dots, so halfway in between those is going to be right here. That's my axis of symmetry. So my axis of symmetry, we'll call it AOS, is x equals negative 1. I can now find my vertex. My vertex is going to be negative 1 and then plug in. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in for both those x's. Now realize I have a 2 out front. That's going to give me um, negative 1 minus 1 and negative 1 plus 3. It's 2 times negative 2 times 2. Multiply these together. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So here's my vertex. Negative 1, negative 8. Down here. There's my vertex. And now I can see my parabola. I'm only using three points on these ones because I have the roots and the vertex. It opens up. It opens up, really, because that value was a positive 2. If you think about our last problem, there would have been a positive 1 right there, and that's what makes it open up as well. This one's going to open down because notice I have that negative right there. So our first thing, let's find our roots. So x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides. That gives me 1 comma 0, which is right here. And I'm going to go x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 from both sides. And I get negative 5, so negative 5, 0. And let's take a look right in between. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So I'll go in the middle of it right here. That's going to give me an axis of symmetry at negative 2. My AOS is x equals negative 2. I'm going to plug negative 2. This is going to be my x component of my vertex. We're going to plug that in to my original. So I'm going to get the negative. Negative 2 minus 1, negative 2 plus 5. That negative is still going to come along. That's going to give me negative 3. That's going to give me positive 3. So negative times negative is positive. That's going to give me just a positive 3. Positive 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to get negative 2, positive 9, which is up here. And here's my parabola. And remember, it opens upside down because that negative out in front of the problem. The last one we're going to take about. Remember we were solving a roots? Well, look at this. If I say x equals 1, if I subtract 1, I go subtract 4, I get x minus 4. That's my, that's my equation. If I wanted to write it in something called standard form, I'm going to multiply out this. So that's going to give me x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So y equals x squared. These are like terms. Minus 5x plus 4. And that's this is my parabola with those roots. If I do the same thing here, that's going to give me x minus 3 when I... Subtract 3, that's going to give me x plus 3, so y is going to equal this. Multiply it out, so I'm going to get x squared plus 3x minus 3x minus 9. Those are like terms. Look, they cancel out. x squared minus 9. That is my, that is my quadratic in standard form. Quadratic means it's x squared. So then we have x equals 0. Well, that's just going to give me x. And x minus 8 is going to give me the other one because I'd subtract 8 from both sides. So this one's a little different. So when it's equal to 0, it's just going to have x. And then multiply this out so I get y equals x squared minus 8x. And that is my parabola. Notice I don't have a c term. That would be 0 in this case. Okay, so your homework, we're going to do page 101. And I think if you did 1 through 5 on 101, and then on page 102, I think you can do 13 through 19. So do 1 through 5 all, 
and then 13 through 19 all. Make sure you ask me if you have any questions. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.